Melayu gitu <laughs> Yeah. Well. <laughs> All right, um just reminder, we are in chapter 3. Okay, we are in chapter 3. We already finished chapter 2 last week. No, last two weeks. And we probably stay on chapter 3 for another week. And then we will skip chapter 4, briefly on chapter 5, and then end up with chapter 6 for another week. Okay? After that, midterm is coming. And how about the homework? Did you do homework by yourself? Did you understand how the homework is done? Yes. Yes, at least you should be under, understand about that. Okay? All right, um, just a review for last week. Last week we said that the shell balance itself really depends on how you set up the shell. It depends on the shape of the shells. If you set it up incorrectly, the answer will be incorrect. So it's a little bit inconvenient to somehow um, tailor made the shell for every problem. So what we like to do is some, we like to get a set of equations that we can use it no matter what your problem is. So any problem is supposed to be, um, we should be able to use that kind of equation for all kind of problems. Okay? So we set up a shell that is the most general shell. The shell looks like this. Okay? And you will have the dimension of the shell to be delta x, delta y, delta z. And last two weeks, last, last time we talked about mass balance. If we construct a mass balance around the shell here, remember right now we have a fluid flowing into the shell in any, I mean, in general direction. The vector here, vector velocity can be in any direction. Then once you set up the mass balance, you end up with this equation. And this equation is a very important equation. Any equation with a name is supposed to be important. So this one has a name, equation of continuity. By the physical meaning, it is a mass balance. So if you apply the equation of continuity, that means you set up the mass balance around your system. Okay? And special case for mass balance here, if you consider the system of fluid which is incompressible, that means your density is constant with respect to position and with respect to time. Then equation continuity can be reduced into the form of del dot V equal to zero. That can be used just for incompressible fluid. All right? So for today, um, I'm going to show you how we get another set of equation that is the momentum balance around the shell. But I'm not very sure whether, whether or not you are pretty much interested in how we derive that equation. Most students just want to get the equation and then use it, not interested in how we derive. So I'm going to go through the derivation briefly. All right. If you are interested in the derivation, it will be written in detail in my handout. And I will bring my handout next time. Agree? Good. So, again, let's come back to our general shell, the cubic with the size delta x, delta y, delta z. Now, we are going to do a momentum balance. Equation for momentum balance would be accumulation, rate of momentum accumulation, equal to rate of momentum in minus out plus sum of force. And the term sum of force here can be thought of as a generation of momentum by external force. And usually by the conventional flow, external force would be force from gravity. Okay? 
So I can write down momentum. But remember, momentum is a tensor. Okay? Tensor should have two directions. One direction is associated with direction of velocity or direction of the flow. The other will be associated with direction of the momentum transfer. Okay? So if I'm interested in x momentum first, x momentum is supposed to be consisting of three components. phi x x, phi y x, and phi z x, right? Remember the second subscript dedicate is dedicated to direction of flow, okay? So phi x x will be x momentum transfer in x direction. Phi y x will be x momentum transfer in y direction. And phi z x will be x momentum transfer in z direction respectively. Now, can you write down direction of momentum transfer in this picture? For sure, phi x x supposed to go in this direction, perpendicular to y z plane, right? It's transfer in x direction. And I like to use double arrow here to signify the direction of transfer. And it's going out here. It's coming in at x. It's coming out at x plus delta x. What about phi y x? What is the direction of phi y x? It's transfer along y axis. So it's supposed to go in here. This is phi y x. In. In takes place at coordinate y. It's going out here at phi y x at y plus delta y. Right? And for phi z x, it's going along z direction. This is phi z x. And this is phi z x going out as z plus delta z. <coughs> All right? So this picture is written just for x momentum only. In reality, we have x, y, and z momentum. So you have to repeat this picture for y momentum and z momentum again. So if you do everything at the same time, the equation will be totally messy. So I'm going to split the balance to each momentum. So let's start with x momentum balance. So here would be x momentum. So the balance start by in minus out. Okay? We have in in x direction minus out in x direction. And as we d we have done before the balance supposed to be multiplied by the area perpendicular to the direction of transfer. So right now we look into x momentum transfer in x direction. So it's, it must be multiplied by area perpendicular to x direction. The area perpendicular to x direction would be delta y delta z. Or from this picture, it would be this area when you consider this vector, right? So if you look into this direction, direction of the transfer, you multiply by the area perpendicular to it, okay? So if you look into phi y x, it's going along this phase, perpendicular to this phase. So the area that you must be multiplied with is supposed to be this area, okay? So we have in minus out in x direction, in minus out in y direction, and in z direction. And then the last term would be sum of force. Sum of force would be totally weight, mg of the fluid residing inside the box. So the mg would be 
volume multiplied by rho multiplied by g. So volume of the whole shell would be delta x, delta y, delta z. Multiplied by vo density would be rho, delta x, delta y, delta z. And then you multiply by g. Of course, since this equation is written for general cases, so it's not necessary that g must be aligned along z-axis. In this case, g can be in any direction. Okay? Remember, remember that we normally put our coordinate with respect to the direction of the flow, not with respect to direction of g. So therefore, I'm going to put gx here, just to be general. All right? So this is sum of force or production term. Then everything combined would equal to rate of momentum accumulation. Accumulation of momentum is basically momentum change with respect to time. Momentum is rho v, differentiated with time. That's the change in momentum with respect to time. But Momentum itself essentially is mv, not rho v. So you need to multiply rho by volume to get m. Okay? So this would be equation for x momentum balance. If you multiply the whole, I'm sorry, if you divide the whole equation by delta x, delta y, delta z, this term should be rho vx by dt. The second term here, if you divide it by delta x, delta y, delta c, this term will be dropped and you get delta x as denominator. And if you take a limit delta x, delta y, delta z approaching zero, this term appears to be differential. Okay? So you have partial differentiation. Similar here. Right? Then I can take minus signs out to get this kind of equation. The last term, when you divide by the volume, you will have only rho gx. Yes? I'm sorry, Z. Pardon? Minus, thank you. Y, yeah, Y as well, sorry. All right. So can I erase this for the moment? This is done. Now, if you apply the same principles, same balance, but if you write it down for y momentum, 